Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today is so exciting because it's another product launch and we're going to be launching product from Ranger and Spellbinders. So that means stamps, background stamps, stencils, and coordinated dies to go along with the products. I am so thrilled that they were once again able to coordinate their schedules together to create a really amazing launch for all of you that is extremely versatile. This time I designed and drew everything in this release by myself and I'm so excited to share it with all of you and I hope you love it. By the time this video is live, everything is available and I'll link down below to several sources where you guys can go shopping and check it out. And using those links down below helps support me and I really appreciate it. When I walk you through all these different supplies, I'm gonna walk you through in little groupings so you'll see there's a background stamp, a stencil, a stamp set, and a die set that sort of coordinate all together. And if you buy that little bundle of products, you're going to have a ton of versatility, but it'll all kind of have a theme to it. I thought that was the easiest way to walk you through this. We've got about three different themes going on throughout this release. This launch has some of my favorite themes, including birthdays, which we can't have enough of, butterflies, and succulents, and I think most of these products can be used all year long in your card making stash. I know sometimes it can seem a little jumbled when you're looking at everything all at once, but hopefully looking at it in groupings will help you see common themes throughout the products. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the video and check it out. Starting off strong, we have this peel apart six by six background stamp called Candles, and I absolutely love it. This has a really fun, whimsical, and playful style, and each candle has a different pattern in it that repeat across the background. These are a nice substantial size to fill out a card or use them individually as kind of a focal point on your card. And what I really love about this is that the center row of the background actually peels apart. So you can use this one individually or you can stamp it down the card and create it in different colors. So this allows you to do many different techniques and use the stamp a lot more than you would if it was just a solid background. And if you wanna use it all as one piece, all you need to do is place this right back together and then put it right back in like a puzzle. And if you need a little help, you can always lift up the stamp and bend it a little bit and it'll go right back into place perfectly so you can stamp the whole background together. Now along with this background stamp, we've designed a stencil set called Candles. And this is a layering stencil set with two pieces in the pack. It's really awesome because the candles are all separate and then you have the flames as a separate layer. So you can do these in two different colors and it makes it super easy to lay on top of the stamp and do your coloring really simply with both of these layers. They line up just perfectly. Stencil sets like this are a huge time saver to color in images like this, and I hope you guys find this incredibly helpful to have in your collection. To go along with and finish off the birthday theme, we have this birthday basic stamp set. This is a clear photopolymer six by nine stamp set, so it's nice and large, and it's got some really great birthday basics to use for all year long. I love these larger images. They're really big and substantial and can be used as a focal point on your card. You got lots of things that are great for birthday like this cake and you can embellish it with the little floral there. You got this big stack of presents, a nice large balloon along with this string and this really cool kind of sprinkle background that you can repeat along the card to create a larger background in several colors. I also worked really hard to make sure the sentiments in this set were really great and substantial. So you can use these larger sentiments on their own and they're really gonna stand out. And you also have some great sub sentiments to use along with the sentiments to really finish off the card nicely. I think this one is gonna be a staple in your stamp collection because you can use it all year long for any birthday cards you're creating. And Spellbinders has the Birthday Basics Coordinated Die Set available that will cut out all of the different images in the stamp set super easily. This is a huge time saver. And here is what that candle stamp looks like paired along with the candle stencil. You can see we got really easy blending and coloring all throughout those candles and I love the look of them. And I finish off this card simply with the happy birthday sentiment from the birthday basics and you can see how bold that is and how it really fills up the card nicely. Now I showed how the full background stamp looks but I want to show how you can use this individual stripe on a separate card to create a different look in your design. So I'm going to peel this out and then I'm going to grab one of the large Simon Hurley Create Acrylic Blocks. I love this one and we can pick up the background stamp with this so that we can just stamp the stripe individually. For this I've cut and scored an A2 size card using this dark white cardstock and I'm going to open it up so we can do our stamping. Then I'm going to ink this up using black ink so we can get a nice crisp outline of our stamp. You could also do some heat embossing like I did in the sample if you want a lighter outline for the image. So then I'm going to take this image and I'm going to move it up a little bit from the bottom of the card and then we can stamp it right down giving it some good pressure to make sure that it all transfers nicely and when we lift it off check that out i just love how beautifully that red rubber stamps 
with all of the amazing detail. And here I used a pigment ink so it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I can just go in over top of the image and throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder to help set the ink and give it a nice glossy finish. Then I'm gonna heat set this until it's nice and clear and shiny. To hold this down while I'm doing my stenciling, I like to use the scrapbook.com Clear the Amazing Matte. So I'm just going to peel it off so it's nice and sticky. Then I'm gonna rotate this and place it right down onto the mat. And this is going to help it stick. Even if it's a little bit warped, the adhesive just sticks really nicely down to the surface, which I really like. Then I'm gonna go in and grab the candles layering stencil. And we'll start off with this first candle layer. And since we used the center row of candles, we can still use the stencil. We're just going to mask off the other portions. So I'm going to line this up with the center row of candles and it should line up perfectly there. There we go. And then I'll just stick the rest of the stencil down into the sticky mat, which is gonna help it stick. As a layer of precaution, I'm also going to lay down a little bit of mint tape to mask off the other candles to make sure that we don't get any other excess ink onto our project. All right, and then we can go in and do our inking. And I kind of want a rainbow coloring all the way across the card. So I'm gonna start off using a little bit of bee sting on this one end. Then I'm going to move into this really great bright pink color called Prom Queen. Blend it out. Next, we're going in with this bright orange color called Guppy. You can see these colors blend together really beautifully and they create really great new colors in between when you overlap them like that. Then I'll bring in Psych, which is this kind of yellowish green color, which is going to kind of bridge the gap in between the orange and the green. Next, I'll use No Diving. I really love that. And check it out. When you mix it in with that Psych, it creates a nice green in between. So even if you skip some of the colors, you're gonna create those colors in between with your next color. And then last but not least, we'll bring in Triple Berry, which is this warm purple color. And again, it's gonna blend to create new colors in between these. It's one thing I love about the Simon Hurley Create inks. They blend effortlessly. You can see that beautiful blend all the way across the card. All right, now before we remove the stencil, I wanna go in and wipe this off with a dry and clean cloth. This is just going to remove any of the excess ink that's sitting on top of the embossing. And we wanna do it while the stencil is still on the surface so that none of that ink goes on the white cardstock. All right, then I can go in and peel this stencil off and check out that beautiful coloring all the way across the candles. It was super easy to do. These layering stencils are a big time saver. So then I'll go in with the second layering stencil. This one has candles two on it, so you just know that the orientation is correct. And then again, we're gonna use just the one row of flames here, line it up super easily, and then place the rest in that sticky mat. And then again, I'm gonna go in and just mask off this bottom area. It's gonna be pretty easy not to get ink down there, but just as an extra precaution. For these flames, I'm gonna use a little bit of Shooting Star, which is this really great bright yellow color. I really love how bright and bold that color is that's gonna be across those flames. And then to add just a little bit of shading to this to give it some depth and dimension, I'm going in with a little bit of Guppy ink, again, on a domed foam blending tool, and I'm just going to blend this in coming in from the bottom of the flames. And again, this is just going to give it kind of a 3D look and give a little bit more depth and dimension to the coloring and blending that we're doing on the card. I love how that looks. All right, then again, I'm gonna go in with a dry cloth and just clean off the embossing there. And then we can lift this off of the surface and that coloring is just beautiful. I love how it turned out. And you can see those two products together make it super easy to color in and this card would be super quick to mass produce as well. So to remove this from the mat, all I need to do is peel it backwards like this and it's going to make it so that it removes easily, it doesn't rip your card stock and it doesn't warp the card either by bending it. If you get any ink on your mat, it's super easy to clean off, especially the Simon Hurley Create inks. I'm gonna spray it down with a little bit of water and then I'm gonna go in with a paper towel or a lint-free cloth and just lightly wipe this down. You don't wanna scrub because it's gonna remove adhesive. Just really lightly, I'm gonna run the paper towel over and the Simon Hurley Create inks come off super easily. And then you're gonna notice it's kind of lost some of its stick, right? Because we added water down. So I'm gonna let this kind of evaporate a little bit, let all the water go off the surface. Don't be alarmed when it's not super sticky because once that water's gone, it's going to re-stick again and become that great sticky mat that you know and love. All right, so then I'm gonna go in with my piece of acetate and place this over top so that when we store it, there's not gonna be any dust on it and it'll be ready for the next time that we use it. I really adore these mats. They're super useful for a lot of different techniques.
To give this card a bit more interest, I'm gonna go across this bottom edge and just cut it out. So I'll go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors and follow the bottom edge of these candles. And I'm gonna do it pretty loosely. I'm not going too close to those candles, but I'm just going to cut these out really nicely. And this is just gonna give it a little more interest by adding lots of texture to that edge by following the design of those candles. I love the interest that that adds to the fold. It just makes it a little bit more unique rather than having it go all the way to the bottom edge. For a sentiment, I'm gonna bring in the birthday basic stamp set. I love this. Again, the sentiments in here are perfect for birthdays. So I think I'm gonna use the celebrate stamp right up top here. I love how bold that is. And then since we have this area down here, I thought it would be perfect to add a sentiment. So I think the uh, you get better looking every year or the hope your day is as amazing as you are sentiments work perfectly down in this area as kind of a sub sentiment. All right, so I've just lined up that celebrate sentiment up top, and then I'm going to grab this sub sentiment that says, hope your day is as amazing as you are, and I'm going to place it at the bottom of the card and make sure it's nice and lined up in the center there. And then to make sure these are lined up, when you press it down, you just wanna make sure that that grid line lines up with the sentiment and they should stamp perfectly straight in your card. So again, just inking this up with black ink to make the outline really nice and bold. And then we can stamp them right down onto our card project, giving it some good pressure to make sure that the sentiments transfer nicely. All right, and here is that finished card. I love how that row of candle looks all by itself. Again, coloring in with the stencils was super easy, and you get that rich and bold blending. And then finishing it off with both of those sentiments and creating this fun and unique card design with that fold is so awesome. I think this is just such a fun and colorful birthday card. And again, it'll be pretty easy to replicate or mass produce if I wanted to make several of them. One thing that I think is really awesome about this is you could use the candle stencil totally on its own as well. So here I'm going to use, again, just one row of these candles just to demonstrate this technique really quickly. And then I'll grab a piece of mint tape to mask off the top and bottom layer so we don't accidentally get ink on those areas super easily. So here I'm gonna start off using clear skies and I'm going to blend it down on the surface of the card starting from the top of the candle and you can see how nicely it blends down on the card there. And then I'm gonna go in using tropical tango which is this darker greenish teal color and I'm going to blend that starting from the bottom and working my way up so that it blends really nicely into that blue color and gives me a really nice gradient between the colors. I love this sort of blue to green combo and I think it works great with these two colors together. And one thing that I think is super awesome is layering other stencils you might already have. So this happens to be the tiny circle stencil from Simon Hurley Create. I love these small dots and we can easily layer this over top of the candle stencil. So I'm just going to hold it down in place and then I'm going to go through using the same exact colors. So starting off with clear skies. And when I hold this stencil over top and I lay another layer of that same exact color right over top, it's going to create a darker color of that same tone. Because it's a translucent dye-based ink, with every layer that we apply, it's gonna make it darker and darker. So these polka dots are gonna show up darker on top of the other layer. And then I'll repeat the same step with Tropical Tango, coming in from the bottom and working my way up. So again, just following, using the same colors on top to get that darker blend with the polka dots. So this is a great way to add texture since we don't have that stamped image in there, you can just use another stencil to add those beautiful polka dots back in here. So then I'm going to peel this up. There we can see we've got the base of our candles worked out there. And then we can go in with the second layer. This is the flame layer. And again, if you can read it, you know you're on the right layer there. And here, it doesn't need to line up perfectly since there's no image to go along with it. So you can make the flames as close to the candles or up a little bit further if you want them to be. For this layer, I'm gonna use a little bit of lunar paste. And this is the advantage of using the stencil without the stamp underneath is we can add lunar paste over top, which is this really great shiny and metallic paste. And I'm just going to take my palette knife from the paste tool set and I'm just going to apply this right over top of that stencil and just lightly put it right through and then once we're done with that, we can kind of smooth it over top to get a nice even coverage of that lunar paste. And then any excess goes right back into the jar so we can use it for next time. All right, then I can peel this right off of there and you can see we've got this really great look with the candles and I love just how shiny this is. And once it dries, it'll become even shinier. So I'm just gonna go in here using that paper towel and simply clean everything off while it's still wet. One thing I love about the Lunar Paste is it is heat stable. So I'm just gonna go in here using my Ranger Heat Tool and I'm just going to heat this up to make sure that I can aid in the drying process so that it dries a little bit quicker. 
And check that out once it's completely dry, the shine becomes even more apparent and it is just so stunning. I love that we were able to add lunar paste through that stencil and do the layered blending using the tiny circle stencil to get this really beautiful effect. So don't forget, you can still just use those stencils or the stamp alone by themselves to still get great results. Here I'm gonna use this large birthday cake image from the birthday basics set and the flower that I'm going to use to embellish the cake. When I apply the cake down onto my acrylic block, I just want to place it down and then with this large open area that we're not gonna do any stamping in, I'm going to press that down to make sure that any air bubbles get out and that's just gonna help get a great stamped impression. For a nice crisp outline, I'm going to stamp these down using some black ink, so I'll ink them up and then we can stamp it right down onto our Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock so we can do some coloring. And then I'm going to stamp down this floral image as well, which is going to be really great to add it onto the cake as a little embellishment from the set. To lock in the ink, and since I'm doing some watercoloring with these images, I'm going to again throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder. When I do my watercoloring, I find that the clear embossing powder holds in the ink and makes it so that it doesn't bleed outside the lines. To color the image in, I'm going to use several different colors from my Simon Hurley Create ink line, and I'm going to just take the colors in the ink pad and swipe them down onto the craft sheet. And this is going to sort of act as a palette of colors that we can reach from and do our watercoloring with. I love the way my inks react with the water and they create such a beautiful watercolor result in the end. When it comes to watercoloring, I always like to start off with my paintbrush and a layer of water before I go in with any color. This is going to help saturate the cardstock and get it ready for any color you're about to lay down. If you don't wet the cardstock beforehand, the color tends to sink in and it won't blend at all and it won't give a smooth effect. So after that water is laid down, we can then dip into our first color. Here I'm using cookie dough to create this nice vanilla cake and I'm just going to go in here and lay this color all across the surface. Surface. It's really easily able to blend and create a nice smooth wash of color over the surface since we prepped it with water first. To add some shading, I'm going back in using cookie dough and I'm going to use a little bit less water this time and it's going to give me a deeper, darker color of that same exact ink that we used. And then I can just blend this together using a little bit of water and it will blend really nicely with the first layer of color that we added. Next, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of purple ink and I'm going to add some purple down down to this frosting. And for these candles, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of purple at the bottom there, and then we can blend it into some prom queen, which is a more pink color at the top of the candles. And then I'll go in with more water and use some shady ink, which is this darker gray color, and I'll do a lighter wash of this color all the way around for the first layer. Then I'm using less water and I'm just going to go around the edges to add a little bit of depth and dimension using the exact same color. And we're gonna add some depth and shading to both sides of the cake stand and then leave the center portion lighter, which gives it sort of the effect of being round. For this flower, I'm gonna use a little bit of guppy, which is this bright orange color. And then I'm gonna do some shading using the prom queen, which is that pink color, to add a little bit of depth and tie it back to that pinkish purple color as well. Now, once all this coloring is dry, I wanna add a little bit more depth and texture to this cake. So I'm gonna go in again using that tiny circle stencil. I'll lay it down right over top of the cake and I'm using a detailed blending tool from Ranger. This is just a small version of the regular size foam blending tool so we can get into smaller areas. I'm gonna use that exact same cookie dough color. So we're gonna do kind of a tone on tone effect. And like I said, when you layer up the ink pads though, you still get a darker color on the second layer since they're translucent and they layer really nicely. So I'm just going to go in those same areas where we added that shading with the darker color, and I'm just going to go around and blend in these little polka dots. Again, we're gonna leave the center lighter and not do as much blending there, but I just want to add texture all around this cake. All right, we can kind of lift it off a little bit to check, and I think that looks great. So I'm gonna lift it off fully, and I love how that looks. It just adds a little bit more texture and dimension to this cake, and gives it more of a design look. All right, now here's what's so awesome about this. It's so amazing to have Spellbinders coordinating dies with these sets now. It makes it so much easier than going in and fussy cutting. So I've chosen both of the dies that I need to cut these out, and then all I need to do is line this up with the image, making sure we've got an even white border all the way around on the inside of this die. And then once everything is perfectly lined up, I'm going to go in and place down my mint tape on both sides to make sure that it holds down nicely when we run it through our die cutting machine. Same thing with this little flower. I'm going to make sure it has a nice even border all the way around, and then we can place down our tape and cut this right out. 
All right, and once we run it through our die cutting machine, here I use the new black Platinum 6. We can easily pop these guys out, and you can see it's got a really nice white even border all the way around the images. And like I said, this is such a huge time saver to be able to cut these out so easily with the coordinating dies. Next, we have the flowering mandala peel apart background stamp. This one has a diameter of about five and a half inches, so it's gonna work really well on your A2 size cards. It's not going to fill the whole card completely, but I love that it's nice and large so you can use it off the edge of a card or right in the center if you want to, to really make a great focal point. One thing I also love about this flowering mandala background stamp is that it has this little octagon design right in the center. So you're able to use this as sort of like a repeating design if you wanna stamp it in several colors going down your card and it's got that really beautiful floral design in the center. Everything in here is hand drawn and I just love all of the little tiny details I was able to include to make this just the perfect and detailed mandala. There is a coordinating layering stencil set called Flowering Mandala to go along with this stamp as well. What's really awesome about this is it has two separate layers and it has stencils and masks. So all you need to do when you get it is just remove these little stickers to review all of the cut out layers that you have as part of this stencil. So in this stencil and mask set, you get six pieces in total. What's really awesome about this is these kind of have this sort of floral shape. So if you want to use it without the stamp, you totally can and create some really beautiful patterns all along your card. But when you use it along with the stamp, it allows you to color in each individual layer of the mandala, which is so awesome. So you're easily able to line this up over top of the design that you've stamped, and then to color in a center portion, you can go in here with this piece. And then reaching for this stencil, we can go in and color the other spaces. So each one of these sort of layers in the mandala gets colored individually and you end up with this really beautifully colored mandala and it doesn't take much time at all using this stencil and mask set. Next we have this Butterfly Kisses, again, six by nine clear photopolymer stamp set. It's got this large rose cluster here. I love that large and detailed rose. And then we've got three different butterflies in this stamp set. We got one that can sort of sit on these flowers really nicely, and then two that are flying with their wings open. What I love about this is it has all of the center bodies of the butterflies that you can stamp in there, and the wing portions as well. So you're easily able to stamp in the colored portions and color them in with no problem at all. We love to fill the space, so we really filled every little last square inch with lots of different sentiments that go along with the butterfly images. I love the I cherish our friendship, sending well wishes and butterfly kisses, spread your wings and fly, you are blossoming, fluttering by to say hi, and even more in the set that you can use. And again, another coordinated die set from Spellbinders. I love this, it cuts out all three of the different butterflies and this large floral image. And it even gets into some of the littler intricate details that you wouldn't want to cut out by yourself. I also love it for the butterfly antenna because I would not want to get in there and do that myself, but the dies have it done for you, so it's gonna save you tons of time. Next we have this background stamp called Kaleidoscope Flowers, and I really love how this one turned out. It's got these really great fine line floral looking designs that are kind of kaleidoscope-ish because they have that really great symmetry all around. One thing I love about this background stamp again is it can be used as a full and solid background stamp like this to create lots of texture and design on your card, but it also has several peel apart portions. This being one of the strips in the stamp, peels apart like this, and you can create a row of design. What I love about this is that you can use it to kind of create a pattern all along your card in different colors. One of the littler flowers also peels out of the stamp, and then you have this larger floral that peels out as well. So you can have these two to kind of stamp all along the card in different colors too. I love these sort of peel apart designs because it makes the stamp so much more usable and versatile. Lots of people say it's so great because you almost get a whole nother stamp set along with your background stamp that you can use together. I also love these because they sort of resemble snowflakes as well as flowers. So depending on how you color these guys in, if you want to use it for winter later on in the year, you totally can. And honestly, it's still pretty cold where I am too, so I could totally use this in a winter card if I wanted to. For the background, I'm gonna use the Kaleidoscope Flowers background stamp. I really love the look of this, and I think it's gonna go perfectly along with that cake. And I'm going to use the circle cut stamping foam. So you could either use the inside piece to create a circle background like this, or you could use the outside to create a frame. And I wanna create a frame so that the inside is white so we have a place to put our cake. All right, I find when using the stamping foam, I get the best results if I stand up and press into it with all of my force, because there's a larger surface area on this foam. 
long. So I'm gonna heat this up for about 15 to 20 seconds. You wanna keep your heat tool moving across the surface to make sure that it's evenly heated and that nothing burns either. And here I'm using my Ranger heat tool. I like this heat tool, especially for heating up the stamping foam because it's got a wider mouth so it's gonna give a more dispersed heat across the foam, which is really great. So once we think we got our foam good and hot, we're going to really quickly turn this over and press it right into the stamp and make sure that we got a nice good pressure all the way around so that it all transfers. And then when we lift this off, check out that beautiful textured design background that we have. Now you can see in some areas it's not super deep and that's because this has a larger surface area so it's harder to get it super indented. But that's totally fine because when we apply our inks you'll see that the design comes out no matter what. So I'm going to grab my piggyback ink. I wanna go for kind of this really light and subtle pink color and this color is really gonna do that for us. So whenever I ink up my stamping foam, I wanna go in a circular motion and I actually keep my ink pad touching the surface as I go across. I find that this circular motion helps me get a great even coverage, whereas if I tried stamping my ink pad down like this, like you usually would on a stamp, it doesn't give great coverage. So after that first layer, we're then going to go in with rosy cheeks, which is just slightly darker, and I'm just going to bring this in right around the edges to create a little bit of a shadowed and darker edge. All right, so I'll just swipe this on right around the edge of the stamping foam. Then to help this transfer, I'm just going to spray this down a couple of times. You wanna spray it enough just to kind of moisten the surface, but not get it too wet where the inks are going to run. You can see it's kind of glistening, but there's no globs of water. All right, then I'll line it up at the bottom of my card base, and then it should line up all the way up, and we could just give it some good pressure to make sure that all of this is going to transfer on our background. And when we lift that off, check out that beautiful stamp background that we've got. I love how it looks and how it's nice and soft around the center with that piggyback color. And then it gets a little bit darker around the edge since we did a little bit of shading. And you can see even in those areas where we thought it wasn't going to stamp because it wasn't super impressed on there, you still get all of that amazing texture. So don't doubt it, just try putting some ink on it and you probably will be able to see the results even if it's not super indented. And then the awesome part about the stamping foam is all you need to do is go back in with your heat tool and heat it up for about five to 10 seconds again, and this is going to go nice and flat, and you're able to reuse the stamping foam over and over again. So that's one thing I love about this stuff, is if you make a mistake, you can always try again by reheating it, or if you wanna move on with a new pattern, all you need to do is reheat it, and you're ready to go for the next design you wanna use it on. Also, a lot of people are probably wondering why you would make a stamp out of a stamp, right? So this one is going to stamp with these black lines in color. So you get that nice kind of lined image there. I love the details in this. But when you use it with stamping foam, you actually get the opposite result. So this lined image stamps in white and then all of the color in the background transfers really nicely. And here, in this case, we use the circle cut stamping foam, so it's extra special since it gives us that nice frame in the center to put an image or focal point. I put some foam tape on the back of this cake, and again, I really love the circle cut stamping foam because we're able to kind of rest it at the base here, and then this gives us a great place to place the cake and have it highlighted right in the center where there's no design going on. And then I can take this floral as well and put it right at the edge of the cake here so we can add it to the design and place it right down on top. And I love that little accent there. It really brings the cake to life if you wanna add a little bit more finishing touches to it. And here is a look at that finished card. I just added the sentiment wishing you another year full of blessings and joy. And then I finished off the inside with this really fun bring on the cake sentiment, which I thought was a great addition with the outside. It makes it nice and fun and playful to have that sentiment. I love how this card turned out with that large cake image. I love how big these images are so they fill a card really nicely. And then of course that really great kaleidoscope flowers background using the stamping foam to finish it off. I love how great and elegant this birthday card turned out. And I think I'm gonna save it for my mom this year. So mom, if you're watching, you didn't see any of that. <laughs> to do my stamping, I'm gonna use the Misty stamping tool. And with this, if you're using a rubber stamp, you want to remove this sort of foam insert so that the rubber stamp can fit nicely in there. So I'll place down my piece of stock white cardstock, and then I'm gonna have this sort of hang off on the edge. Like I said, you could center it if you want to, but I like the idea of this sort of hanging off the edge a little bit like this, going onto the card. And then I'm going to peel off the back cling that it comes on, and then we'll lift it up with the misty lid. Then I'll go in with clear sticky Versamark ink to ink up the whole background stamp because I'm gonna do a little bit of heat embossing and I want white lines. But if you want to stamp this down with a more crisp ink, you could use black as well. 
All right, then I'll go in using clear heat embossing powder. You could also use white embossing powder in this instance, but I find clear heats up a little bit better for me. And the reason why I'm doing this is so I can get a nice resist against the white. Then I'll heat set this until it's clear and shiny. All right, now I've got the Make Art Station out because I wanna use these magnets to help hold down the stencils. So I'm gonna start out with the outermost layer and place this down, lining it up with the mandala design. And then we can place down our magnets to hold it in place while we're doing our blending. Then I can bring in the center piece, which is going to mask off the next section so that we don't get ink on it. And I'll just place this down, lining it up with that inside portion of the mandala design, and then again, placing down the magnets to hold it in place while we blend. Now I'm gonna start off with Crown Me Ink, which is this beautiful purple color, and I'm just going to go in this little canal that we've kind of masked off and ink it up with that Crown Me color. And then we can go in here and lift the rest off, and you can see it blended that outside nicely too, without getting ink over the edges. Next, we can go in with the second stencil, and we can lay this down right over top, which is going to mask off that last purple section that we just blended, and make sure that no ink goes over the edge there. And then this floral looking mask is going to mask off the next section inside our mandala. And I just kind of hold down the mask as I'm blending to make sure that the magnets are holding it down, and that it doesn't move while we do our blending but it is pretty easy to do on this Make Art Station. Of course, if you don't have the station, you can always just tape down each layer too to make sure that it's held in place while you're doing your blending. Next is this stencil right here, which is going to mask off this layer. You kind of just keep working your way down in the stencil. And then this little hexagon portion is going to mask off the inside section right there. Honestly, I don't even think we can hold that down with a magnet. I'm just gonna have to hold it with my finger. For this, we'll use a little bit of Guppy, which is that super bright orange color, and I'm just going to go in here and blend this around that area. Last but not least, I'm going in with Shooting Star, and we're gonna bring back in this piece and just place the little hexagon right over the center to mask everything else off super easily, and then we can go in and blend this out with some Shooting Star. And then when we lift that off, I love how this all looks. It was so easy to color in by using the stencils and masks and you get a nice different color in each layer, which is just so stunning in the end. To finish this off, I'm just gonna go in with my Fisker's Spring Assist scissors and loosely cut around the edge, leaving a little bit of a white border all the way around. This is gonna make it so that we can add it to a different colored background if we want to. I've added some foam tape and then I'm going to add this down onto a card base with navy card stock. I love the contrast that it adds and it really makes the mandala stand out against the dark background with all of that beautiful and intense color that we added. To finish off this card, I wanna use the Butterfly Kisses stamp set and I think this size butterfly is perfect for this card. So I'm gonna start off by stamping down the outline of the butterfly in black ink, stamp it down, and there we've got a really great impression. And you guys know the drill by this point, I'm gonna throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder and heat set this until it's clear and shiny. And then there's solid images to fill it in. To stamp the center down, I'm gonna use a little bit of shady ink and ink this up. And then we can just line it up right in the center and stamp it down. Then we have a solid portion for the wings and I'm gonna use a little bit of shooting star to match some of the blending that we did in the background. And then I'll use a little bit of Guppy, which is this mid-tone orange color, and I'm just going to roll this color onto the edges of the wings to add a little bit of depth and dimension to the stamping, and stamp it down. And check out how simple that is to color in the butterfly super easily with those solid images. I love that they're included in the set. All right, I found the die from the coordinated die set that we're going to use, and I'm gonna grab a little bit of mint tape to help hold it in place. And I love the mint tape because even when you run it through your die cutting machine, it's not going to rip anything. And that really can't be said with every kind of tape out there. I've tested a lot of them. So then I'm gonna line it up perfectly and then tape it down and we can run this through our die cutting machine. All right, using our new black platinum six, I'm going to run this right through to cut it out. And it couldn't be more simple. I'm gonna pop this guy out and check that out. I love having these coordinating dies for these sets. I'm gonna place this yellow butterfly right in between that yellow and orange area, kind of in the center of the card, fluttering on by. And I added on some foam tape right in the center so that the wings can have a little bit of dimension on the sides. All right, I've added a sentiment down and there is a look at that finished card. I love that super bright and colorful mandala that we used with all the different layers of the stencils and masks to color it in super easily. And then against that dark background with that gorgeous butterfly front and center, I think it turned out just beautifully. All right, so from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set, I wanna stamp down this large rose image just to give you an idea of how large it is on the card. And I also wanna cut it out with the coordinated dies to show you how beautifully it cuts with lots of detail. So let's stamp this down just using some black ink so we get a nice jet black image. 
I love how that turns out. And check out all of the little details in that stamp too. It's just beautiful. You know me, we're gonna throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder all over the image. To color this in, I wanna do something super simple. So I'm just going in with the dome foam blending tools and starting off with the lightest color of pink called Piggyback. And I'll just sort of blend right up until the edge of the flower, keeping it inside of the lines. And these little mini blending tools are pretty easy to do that with. All right, we don't have to go right up to the edge, but I'm getting as close as possible to get some nice shading and depth on this rose. And then again, for the same thing for the top one, I'm gonna go in and get as close to the edge as possible to add some depth and shading to the rose. Next, I'm gonna use some rosy cheeks, which is kind of the mid-tone pink, and add just a little bit of that color to the center to get a little bit of darkness going on. Same thing with this top one. A little bit to the center, and a little bit of that color goes a long way when you're shading like this. And then we can go even one step further using one of these detailed little blending tools and a little bit of prom queen, which is that kind of darkest and rich pink tone. And I'll just add that right to the center, and this little detail tool can get into all of the little tiny areas the other blending tool can't, and I'll just go in and blend this out super easily. All right, then I'm gonna go in using Viper to do the leaves, and again, here I'm using a detail blending tool, and I'm just gonna go into the leaves with this small detail blending tool and blend out some of this color. And I love this Viper color because it's not super bright, and it's a great color for doing the leaves, for roses, or different flowers. So I'll just go in here. I always start at the center edge because that's where it's gonna be a little bit darker and have some shading. And then I'll blend outwards. And these little detail tools are great at getting into the small little leaves like this. I love just how simple that was to color those in. No real detail coloring or watercolor going on here. Just a couple blending tools and some quick inking to get this beautiful looking rose. And again, we're just gonna eyeball it to try to get an even border all the way around the image like this. And once we think we've got it good, we can go in with a couple pieces of mint tape to hold it in place while we run it through our die cutting machine. All right, then I'll just run this right through. And check out just how beautiful that gets into all of the little details of this floral. And it even gets in between the center area that you wouldn't usually be able to cut out and it cuts it out just beautifully. To create a nice tone on tone background, I'm again going in with the kaleidoscope flowers. I love all the details in this one. And I'm gonna use a little bit of woof ink and ink up this stamp so that we can stamp it down onto a piece of my gray cardstock. All right, so once we got that all inked up, I'm going to place this down on my cardstock, and then I'll just use a pressure tool to press it right in and make sure that everything transfers really nicely. All right, and when we lift that off, check out that really great stamping that we got. I like that the background is nice and tone on tone. It's pretty subtle, so that when we put our floral on top, it just adds enough texture in the background, which adds lots of detail. All right, I finished it off with the sentiment from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set, and that finishes off the card beautifully. It's really nice and simple using that large floral from the stamp set and the kaleidoscope flowers in the background to create that really great subtle geometric design. I am loving just how beautiful and sophisticated this card looks. Next, we're getting into the sort of desert theme with this Moroccan background stamp. I love this super bold geometric design that we have going on in the background stamp, and I think this is going to be a staple for me to add texture and pattern to my backgrounds. This one is not a peel apart background stamp, but it is that really great high quality red rubber that you've come to love and expect from us, and I really love how this stamps in the background, again, to create that really nice geometric look. I love designs like this. I can see it being used for so many different themes, and I think I'm gonna get a ton of use out of it in my collection. And last but not least, we have this clear six by nine photopolymer succulents stamp set. So inside of the set, you get lots of different succulent images, you get outline images, and you get the solid versions of the succulents, which I really love. We have this nice large succulent that you can use to create sort of a nice background or focal image, and then a couple of different succulents in different varieties of pots that you can use again for a focal image on your card. I visited California and saw tons of succulents and cacti and took a bunch of pictures of them in real life and that's really what inspired the drawings inside of this stamp set. And then again really great sentiments that go along with these succulents and I wanted to make sure that we had a mix of playful sentiments and sentiments that you can use for a more mature card as well. So things that are more inspiring like never give up, sending hugs, so proud of you and you inspire me. 
believe in your dreams. Lots of those are super great. And then I wanted some puns, so life would suck without you, and you're looking sharp, I thought would go great along with the cacti. And then again, Spellbinders has a coordinating set of dies called succulents that will cut out all of the different outline images in your stamp set, and I believe it'll also cut out this large one because it's the same as that design as well. Especially with these little guys, that is going to be so helpful to have the dies to get around those detailed images. When you're designing a die set, you have a certain amount that you can use, and it's gonna be the same price price point no matter what, whether you fill that area or not, right? Because you're using a certain amount of metal. So I requested to add a word die inside of here, and so that is how this hugs die came to life inside of the coordinating die set. So it just gets you more use for the money you're spending on the die set. And also if you're not in on the joke here, hugs is kind of funny because like succulents are spiky and so that's why it's kind of a pun there. It's a little bit sarcastic. My team wasn't in on it so I hope you're, you're understanding it. Maybe you're on the same wavelength as me, but no matter what, you can use the hug sentiment for lots of different great cards. Before I introduce this next stencil, I wanna take a look back in time to see what it was sort of inspired by. This was a stencil we released a few years ago and it was immensely popular. This is called the Scene Maker Stencil. Stencil. And what I love about this is it has grass, clouds, mountains, it has the sun, and lots of different things you would use to make a sky, and this little tiny hill up here. What I love about this is it has every element in the stencil to make a really great scene on your card making project. You can see some of the examples on the back here, and I've used this stencil so much on lots of my projects. And you guys received it so well that we had to create a second. So today I bring you guys the Sedona Scene Maker Stencil, and this is a stencil layering set. So it has two different stencils in the set, and you also get masks as well. You get this little sun mask, and you also get these three cacti masks as well that come out of that stencil. So I just keep these in the back of my stencil pocket so I can use them whenever I need to. So this stencil is used for making those kind of rocks and mountains that you see in Arizona. I really love these kind of jagged hills. And then up top, you get the sort of masked off version, which is super helpful when using this stencil. And then on this one, you get these cacti that you can stencil in. And then again, you get the top version, which is just the negative version of this that you can use to mask off those areas. And then you also get the three cacti by themselves, some birds, and a sun in here as well. I just love how beautiful and realistic this stencil can look for creating backgrounds like this. And on the back of your stencil package, you get an idea of what this can look like so that at home, if you're using this stencil, you have something to sort of follow along with when you create. But I'm so excited to see how you guys take this stencil to new heights in your card making projects, and I cannot wait to see what you create with it. I've already created a card with some of the different succulents in the pots, so I thought I would use this larger succulent from the set to create a really beautiful and fun background. Off to the side, I got lots of different green colors of the Simon Hurley Create ink pads, and I'm just going to go in with several of these different colors, starting off with a little bit of Viper. I'm going to ink up this stamp, and then I'm gonna go in with a darker color. Here I'm gonna use Fake Plant, and I'm just going to, again, kind of roll some of that green color onto the edge and get a little bit of variation in the coloring. Once that's done, I'm going to stamp it down and give it some good pressure. And you want to give it lots of pressure, especially because the tape is a little bit lifted in that area, so we wanna make sure it still stamps nicely. And there we have one of the succulents. All right, for this next one, I'm gonna go in using Minty Fresh, which is this light mint color for some color variation. And then to darken this one up, I'm gonna go in using Tropical Tango. And there we go, another succulent. I actually really love how that color combination turned out as well. And now we can start repeating the colors. So I'm gonna do that overzealous again, and then some later gator on the edge of this one. And we're gonna stamp this kind of near the bottom edge here, giving it some good pressure to transfer. And you can see my Simon Hurley Create ink stamp really nicely on the surface, nice and solid. And then I'll also blend in overzealous wherever I used overzealous on these. And this is gonna help add some depth by adding some shading on the edges. And also right up against this edge, it's gonna make the edge a little bit more defined by adding inking all over it. And last but not least, I'll just add a little bit of Viper in here where I stamped down that cactus. And once we've finished, we can go in and peel off our four inch mint tape. And you can see how beautifully that masked off. It did a great job masking off a super crisp edge. And you can see, 
it didn't rip the cardstock at all, which I really appreciate with this tape. Here I just used the solid images, but if you also want to use the outline, here I stamped down the outline first and then the solid images on top. And you can see I didn't line them up whatsoever, I just stamped them kind of willy-nilly on top, and I love that sort of playful look that that gives as well. So you got a couple different options while you're creating a background like this. For this card, I'm going to stamp down the sentiment that says life would suck without you. I think that one is just too fun to not use on this card. And I'm gonna stamp it in some Versamark clear sticky ink onto a piece of black cardstock. All right, I'll throw over a layer of white heat embossing powder, and then I'm going to tap off the excess, and then we can heat set this until it's nice and bright white. All right, then I'll place down that sentiment on some foam tape right in between that line, and there we have the finished card. I love how this one turned out. It's super simple with that masking technique, but those solid succulents are so much fun to build up a really nice and colorful background. For this next card, I'm using the Moroccan background stamp, and I'm gonna use it with a little bit of cookie dough ink. So I'm going to start off by just inking up this stamp using this light color ink all over the background. And then I'm gonna take the inked background and I'm going to put it at a slight angle like this and then we can stamp it right down onto our card. And I'm gonna go in with my pressure tool just to press this down and make sure that everything transfers nice and evenly. And when I lift that off, you can see that really great stamped background that's transferred. I like how subtle it is with that nice soft tan color using the clicky dough ink. All right, so I'm using one of the cacti and I'm gonna ink this up using some black ink and stamp it down onto my stark white cardstock. And there we can have a nice jet black image. For the cactus, I'm gonna use a little bit of viper ink and then I'm going to add a little bit of shading and depth using fake plant. And I'm going to just take this from the bottom and roll the ink upwards to get kind of that different mixed tone in there. All right, then I'll stamp that down and I love that these solid images are included in the set so you can stamp them right over top and get super easy coloring and shading. For the pot, I'm just gonna use a little bit of Weeping Willow. I always start off with a layer of water directly on the pot first, and then I can go in with the color. You wanna add that water first just so that the cardstock is ready, and then it'll take the color beautifully, and you can see it blends really nicely on the surface, rather than just sinking in if the surface was completely dry. Once we've added that wash of color, I'm gonna go in with less water and more color, and then we can add our shadows. So here I'm gonna add the shadows kind of inside the top of the pot there, and then I'll add them around the edge as well. And to blend it together, I'll just add more water down and it'll blend out really nice and smoothly with the first color. And again, I'll grab the coordinating die, line it up with the cactus, and then we can place it down to hold it in place while we run it through our die cutting machine. I've added the cactus down front and center, and then to add a bit more dimension and shading to this background, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of cookie dough ink, which is the same color ink we stamped in, and I'm just going to blend this color upwards. This is gonna add a little bit of shading from the bottom and give the card a bit more dimension to it. So I'm going a little bit more heavy handed right at the bottom edge, and then I'll sort of fade this up into that lighter tan color. All right, and there we have our card. Again, a super easy card with not too many layers, but I love the added dimension of stamping this on an angle like that and halfway off the card, and then using it as kind of a grounding point to put our cactus on top. And that cactus is just adorable. All right, now let's finish things off with a bang by using the Sedona Scene Maker stencil. This one is one of my favorites. All right, now whenever I use this stencil, I wanna create kind of the sky or backdrop, whatever is gonna be behind all the mountains, first. So I'm gonna go in and just lay down some really quick and simple color. All right, I'm gonna bring the yellow up a little bit further than I usually would because the ground is gonna kind of be right here. So it's gonna cover some of it up. So I'll bring the shooting star in and blend this down. And you can see my inks blend super quickly and super smooth as well. Like that is a great layer of color we got going on there. Next, I'm gonna bring in Guppy, which is this nice mid-tone orange color. We'll bring it in and blend it down with that yellow. And again, it blends super nicely into that yellow with very little effort. Next, I'm bringing in some orange. Here I'm using Roar and this color is kind of a zinger. So I'm gonna be a little bit light-handed with it. It's this really great and bright orange color and I'm just going to bring it in here and blend it down into the guppy. Next, we're bringing in Prom Queen. This is a really nice bright pink color. I'm gonna flip the background so we've got something to hold on to and then blend that right down. These colors blend beautifully, but they also create new colors in between. So there's a kind of a reddish color forming in between, which is just beautiful. This is one of my favorite color blends. And then last but not least at the top, I'm gonna go in with Crown Me and finish it off. I love this kind of bluish purple color. 
and it really works great for these kind of sunset and sky scenes. And again, it'll create a new color in between with that pink and it kind of creates this warm purpley color. We can also add something a little bit darker at the top if you want to. Here I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Shady and what Shady is gonna do is it's just gonna darken that purple color up a little bit more up top and it's gonna create kind of an even darker purple kind of shadow, which I really like. So you can see that darker edge that is shady and it does a really great job at making dark colors even darker. All right, you saw how quick and easy that was to lay down the base and now let's start working on some of the layers on the background. Again, I'm gonna use the scrapper.com clearly amazing mat because I want a nice sticky surface to help hold this down as I do my blending. I'm gonna go in, place this guy down and then we'll go in with the first stencil. This is the one that has the mountains on it and I'm gonna kind of line this up where I want it I want it about halfway up the background with the tops of these mountains. But again, you guys can play with this and go however much you want. You can create whatever sort of scene you want to, which I think is awesome. And then if need be, you can always go in with a little bit of mint tape and mask off some of these cacti if you're afraid of inking them. For this, I'm gonna bring in some Weeping Willow, which is this nice dark brown color. And I'm just gonna go in here and lightly blend that onto the surface. And you don't need to be too heavy handed. These are kind of off in the distance anyway. So I'm, I kind of want them to be lighter than the black, right? So I'm not going in and doing too much with this brown color, just kind of adding some shading and some depth to the background peel this up from the background. I love how those look. And if you want to, you can even add like another layer of these just by shifting them, all right, and making it go in between. Or you can even like flip this. So let's say we want the mountain size to be completely different, right? We're gonna go in, flip it, and then all I need to do is just go in with a lighter hand. Since these are gonna be further in the distance, you're gonna see them less, right? So what that's gonna do is make another mountainside that's even a little bit further in the background, which is awesome. All right, next we're gonna bring in the stencil with the cacti on it, and I'm going to place this right down on here. And here I'm gonna go in with VersaFine Claire. The reason why I don't wanna go in with too permanent of an ink is because it'll be a little bit more difficult to clean off my stencil, and I don't want that, right? So I'm gonna go in, dip this into my foam blending tool, and then I'm going to bring this onto the surface, and when you're using a stencil like this, you can of course use pixie spray if you want to, but it's gonna lift a little bit if you go in that circular motion. So what you need to do is go in more of kind of a pouncing motion, and then it won't get caught on any of the details, and you'll get these stencils inked up perfectly. All right, then I'm just gonna go down on the background and fill the rest of this hillside in with that black pigment ink. But I want another cactus on this one. So what I'm gonna do is just lift this up you can just slightly lift it, and I'm just going to match it up with how the hillside looks, right? And I'll just bring in the next cactus. You can totally move it, right? Because this is still lined up with how it was going. So now all I need to do is just blend that into the rest of the hill, and then we can blend this cactus right on super easily, again, using that sort of pouncing motion. And then once we lift this off, you've got a beautiful hillside with your three cacti on the hill, and I love that these are kind of silhouettes, so you get them really dark and crisp in the front and center of your card. All right, and then using Lunar Paste, I wanna create a sun in the background there, so I'm just going to grab the sun that's on that stencil, lay it right over top, and then I'm just gonna go in with my finger and a little bit of Lunar Paste. You could also use a blending tool in this instance, but I'm a little bit too lazy at this point to bring out a blending tool, and I'm just going to add the paste right in the center of that sun. All right, I've added it down on the card base and stamped down a sentiment that says, believe in your dreams from the succulent stamp set. And I love how this looks. Of course, if you wanna create a scene and then put a stamped image on it, maybe a little car driving by, that could be super cool as well. But I just wanted to keep it super simple with the silhouette image of the cacti and the beautiful scene that we've created on this card. And again, I can't wait to see how you guys bring the stencil set to life in your own projects. All right, you guys, that was a long video, but there was a ton to cover and so much inspiration. And I hope you guys are inspired by seeing all the different examples after today's video. Remember, everything is available for purchase now, so I'll link to several retailers down below where you guys can check it out and purchase your supplies. And I cannot wait to see when you get your hands on it, what you create with these. Leave me a comment down below letting me know which card or product was your favorite, and I cannot wait to hear and chat with you guys down there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.